Let's get started. Frequency drives. All right, let's see how they do what they do. This is kind of in a nutshell. First of all, let's look at plumbing. In plumbing, you've got water that goes through a check valve. Check valve prevents the water from going backwards. Makes sense? Okay, let's look at electricity. Electricity has a check valve. It's called a diode. That's where things get started in a frequency drive. You take electricity, will go this way, but it will not go this way. All right. In electronics, you can get a uh, uh, situation where you've got uh, a series of diodes, and those diodes are uh, there to take a sine wave. All right, if you look over there, you see your sine, everybody knows what a sine wave looks like. Part of the time in AC current, you've got positive voltage. Part of the time, you have negative voltage. All right, we run it through some diodes, and all of a sudden, you take and convert it to this. So now all we have is positive voltage. Pretty simple. Okay. And now you can run this uh, through a, uh, a little circuit. Let's uh, put some uh, filtering here. And we take that, uh, that wave that looks like this, and we change it to looking like this. This being zero. So what you're doing is you're, you're just sort of filtering the humps out. So now you come up with a pretty nice little DC circuit. This guy right here takes AC, converts it to DC. All right. Then we do, and this is your filtering part. Then we do something kind of interesting. We send it to this little part. Everybody can recognize my artwork here. What is this? This is a computer. Right? Everybody knew that. It's a computer. The computer just thinks real fast. This computer controls some switches. Very, very fancy and very fast switches. So that computer starts opening and closing a series of switches. So we take this DC voltage here and we start turning it on and off. And we do it in such a way that you'll come up with what you see right here. A pulsed DC signal. Of course, it flips it so that you have a negative side. Bottom line, what are we trying to do? We're trying to take a voltage that the motor likes and control that voltage and then give it to that motor in such a way that, th that we can control that motor. Does that make sense? That's what a frequency drive does. So we've talked about why we need them. Now we're talking a little bit of how they do what they do. So now, does this make sense? All right, most drives, they've got this part down pretty well they do things pretty, it's very common how they do what they do. You've got big diodes. You've got big capacitors. You've got filtering components in there. This is where some of them differ, you know, the computer part. 
but most people have that down pretty well too, where they're fairly uh, easy and economical and reliable. That's where the drives of today are different from the drives of yesterday. All right, this is why we like to use them. We talked about saving energy. This gives a representation of what the savings potential is. Um, if we look at 100% of the output of a motor, you, if you put the uh, regular line voltage to a motor, it's going to come out at a certain speed. Now, if you take and put that voltage through a uh, frequency drive, and you're able to throttle that drive back, if you throttle it back just a little bit, you have tremendous energy savings. Now, if you look up there, if you throttle it back 20 to 25 percent, you, have, you save half of the power that motor consumes. Now, most of our power that's generated is consumed by buildings, commercial buildings, moving, moving water and air. And we've established that most of the time we don't need all that water and air. So if you can throttle back, now for instance 60 hertz is what a motor operates off, that's power that uh, comes out of the power lines. If you throttle it back 20 percent, that's 12 hertz. If you throttle back 12 hertz, you are pretty close to half the power. Half the power, half the cost. Sound interesting? Does that show you why people are using more and more drives, especially in the last five years? They're everywhere. Money saved calculation right here on the graphic. Uh, if you just assume $1,000 at 100% at 60 hertz full speed, if you back it off uh, to 75% and generally you can, that's your savings you cut it in half, maybe a little more than half. There's another advantage to these things. You've got a built-in soft start component. If you've got a big 50 horse motor on an air handler or pump, and that contactor pulls in, you've got a lot of forces on that equipment. Frequency drive, when it uh, pulls in to uh, start that motor, you're going to start it up over 5 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, whatever you know, the case may be. Um, we'll, I'll show you the, the setup on the Honeywell and it basically asks you, it, it throws most of the startup into two, one of two categories. Is it a pump or is it a fan? Uh, if you look at pumps, most of the parameters with pumps are similar. Most of the parameters for a fan are similar. So if you tell it if it's a pump or a fan, give it a little bit more information, it knows how to control you know, nine times out of ten applications. Then there's some applications. If you have a huge fan, Maybe 30 seconds, that's the default for a fan on, on the ramp up time. Maybe that's a little bit quick. Maybe you want to slow it down a little bit. I'll show you how to change that parameter. It's real easy. We're almost through this. Any questions so far? Okay. In a um, whole building design, now engineers are looking at efficiency of the whole building. They're looking at in, proper insulation, proper pressurization, 
Pressures, building pressurization is critical. Those of you who operate buildings probably realize that. Uh, insulation of the windows, reflectivity of the coatings for the uh, glass, all this kind of works together, including frequency drives. We're seeing 40 to 70 percent energy savings in the newer building designs. Honeywell has a pretty nice system. They take uh, the components. Again, most of this is hardware, and most of this is common among the different brands. Where you get into the differences is how it controls it. All right. Now what I'd like to do, this is the part I like actually messing with a thing. Now, not everyone can see uh, what this looks like. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of illustrate it, and then afterwards, those of you that have time, you can come up and actually hit the keys, mess with it. Um, on the, on drives, how many of you think that a drive is a really simple piece of equipment? One? Anybody else? Two, three? Okay, all right. Some of you think there's a little mystery involved. Maybe it's kind of, well, you know, if you know how to do it, anything's easy, right? Brain surgery is easy if you know how to do it. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this, this is a special drive uh, cover taker offer tool. All right. We'll just take a look at what it looks like down in here. Now, uh, you've got your power wiring, you've got your control wiring, and they're separate. It's very, very important that you keep your power wires and your control wires as far separated as you practically can. Uh, these drives are very, very sensitive to signals. All right, the power wire has a signal, has an EMF. So that can influence your control. So if you uh, notice right here, I've got two separate conduits. One for my power, one for my control. If you'll notice, I've got a lot of control wires here. You'll typically not see this many. Uh, this is a lot of wires because I've got a lot of stuff here hooked up to my drive. The typical application, you've got one cable going to it that is back net. That back net might land right over here where it says A and B. Or could have an Ethernet connection which plugs in to the jack right here. If you don't have back net, or Modbus into you know these protocols, which by the way, right out of the box, it comes talking these different languages. You don't need option cards unless you're running lawn. Anybody uh, deal with lawn? There's a few. That's a fairly inexpensive card that just pops in right here, and you wire your lawn to this. All right. Now, if if it's uh, let's say you're going to use a device like a T775M like we have over here. Um, I find this to be very commonly used if you want to use uh, frequency drive to control, let's say a cooling tower fan, 